Hi everyone, welcome to my 100th video special, a quick tutorial on MHN.Quest. For those of you that already use this website for your MHN needs, you know what's up. For those that don't, trust me when I say that this website will be your best friend. The website is extremely user-friendly and easy to navigate. Frankly, you probably don't need to watch this tutorial to use some of the basic functions, but I will be covering some novel features that you may be missing out on. MHN.Quest is an independent database created by an absolute chad going by Sammy Lau. His team works hard on translations and have already made the website available in nine different languages. Like many others, I am so so grateful for his amazing work and have even donated to support him. I am not sponsored for this video but I just hope to spread the good word and help others discover this amazing Monster Hunter Now tool. Let's start from the build tab. Here you will see a full table of equipment skills for the respective monsters. This tool will be your go-to for constructing all your build combinations. Rather than searching through the whole table, I would recommend you use this skill filter. You can even type in the skill name for a quicker search up. So let's say, since I play the Black Diablo's bow, I only want to see skills that contain focus, burst, and maybe some weakness exploit. The table will be narrowed down to show equipment containing my selected skills. And from there, you can begin trying to form suitable armor combinations. To save this loadout, you can do so in this tab over here, but not so fast. You'll want your armor set to be reflecting the appropriate weapon it's meant for. So select your weapon class and in the leftmost column, your weapon. Then click on the loadout button and type in whatever you'd like to name this loadout. Then the pen icon. If you want to share your build, you can copy the link here. And if you want to look at it again, just press this button. To erase everything, the reset button is your best friend. Every time I click reset, it's a little oddly satisfying. Sorry if that's weird. Okay, so there's also an auto build function. I wouldn't solely rely on this for getting the best or situational builds as it only shows you one combination. It doesn't always configure the meta combination, but I think it's useful for random theory crafts. So say for some reason I want Evade Extender with Artful Dodger, Evasive Concentration, Concentration and Burst. And boom, easy. Next up, we have the Item Box tab. You can put in all equipment and weapons that you own in the game. So say I have a Legiana bow at 8.2. In the Total Cost tab, I can see what materials it took for me to get that upgrade and how much Zenny I spent. Now, if you actually decide to spend time putting in every armor and weapon that you own, maybe to flex how much materials you've used up, make sure to just get an export link at the bottom here and save it. As long as you have this long sentence of code, if for some reason your browser doesn't save what you did, then you can always copy paste and import again. Cool, huh? It's also useful for transferring to another device like your phone. Next, we have the materials tab. This is something you're going to use often. This tool will show you how much material and zenny you need for your upgrade goals. So recently, I've been building a pink Rathian longsword. Yes, you're going to witness how boosted I am on the longsword soon. You can check materials required all the way back from a new forge to whichever grades you're aiming for. It also shows you the total zenny you need and an estimation of the amount of monsters you need to slay. Now, this estimation is quite accurate, but the number is always a bit higher than what you actually need. So you'll never really be disappointed. This has been true for all my crafts and I've heard similar stories from others as well. I suspect that the estimation cannot account for broken parts rewards because that's too much of a variable. So as long as you at least try to break one or two parts during your hunt, you should get your item ahead of this estimation. You can also add to your wishlist and it will appear here. You can fill in what materials you have to keep track of your progress. Additionally, if you've managed to upgrade your weapon, simply click on the green upgrade arrow to increase it accordingly. Amazing, right? So let's say I have enough of all of this, lacking in sharp claws, enough Rathian stuff, lacking in R1s and R5s, lacking in Wyvern Gem Shards and 100k Zenny Shorts. If I go over to the individual progress, 
in one look, I will be able to see how far I am able to take my upgrade. So I have enough materials and zenny to upgrade until I'm gated at 9.2 by Sharp Clocks and again at 9.3 by Wipe and Gem Shards, so on and so forth. Next, we see a trash list that contains items not required based off what you have on your wish list. This can be very useful for storage management. So I would suggest that you add stuff into your wish list. Whichever, weapons, armors. Don't worry if you want to look at this progress feature for just one item, you can always filter to just the gear that you want to look at. And same thing at the individual progress as well. And if you didn't miss out anything, then your trash list should show you only stuff you're safe to throw. Next, we have the reverse search. So I find this useful if I'm looking through my storage and wondering what say Kuyaku hide is used for. So I'll click it and it will show me how much Kuyaku hide is used in various armors. The number shows up to max grade. This is another quick way to decide if you can throw a certain monster material. Next up, we have the compare tab. This will help you compare damage of different build sets. You will see two checkboxes here. The elemental attack invalid just removes the elemental attack portion from the bar, showing you just its raw stats. You mostly wouldn't have a use for this, unless you're determined to use elementals against monsters that are not weak to it, which is kind of cursed, so don't do that. And then you have practicality assessment. You see some percentages under each skill. This percentage refers to the effectiveness of the skills to account for realistic gameplay. You could keep it switched off or on. It depends on you. So you can manually put in the skills like say, I'm using a grade 7.5 Xeno bow, running Thunder 5 and Focus 4. And I'd like to compare it with what if I ran Thunder 4 Focus 5. Boom. You can even rearrange each input by just dragging them above or below one another. Additionally, if you have built saved, you can simply add it. Click on the blue paper icon, click on the loadout and press go. You will see that it has selected out the Black Diablo's bow with the relevant skills as per the loadout. I'll just need to check if it's at the correct weapon grade as it automatically puts in 8.5. Click add and boom. I'll get into what the various sections of the bar mean soon. Just one more feature here, which is a new release, auto-optimize. I played around with it a little and noticed that this feature is able to optimize build sets based on your weapon grade. I'll show you. So let's say with elemental bows. We all know more in elemental attack than focus is more beneficial at lower weapon grade levels. So let's see what it gives us at grade 6.5. And I'd like it to show me 10 build combinations. Boom. Okay, so of course there are going to be sets that are totally impractical, like the ones at the top. Though rating the highest in effective damage are too sweaty without any points in focus. So I look further down for one with focus and I spot elemental attack 5 with focus 4. Wonderful and sounds great to run. Now, what if our weapon grade was at max level? I see heroics with resentment, too sweaty, and finally burst 2 wax 2 focus 5. Okay, cool. And then most importantly, elemental attack 4 with focus 5 instead. The feature actually optimized for max grade weapon. Less in elemental attack and more in focus. This feature is great, but you're going to find lots of heroics, which is a skill that increases your attack power when your health is lower than 29%, and resentment that increases your attack power for 15 seconds when taking damage, which are totally not practical for daily use. So ignore these builds and look for ones without them. Fantastic. So now that we know that, this is a visual showing you what each section refers to. Take a screenshot. Next up, the events tab. This is where you'll see date and times for when events come around. They don't show you event details, so you still need to check image and news channels for that. But at least it shows you date and time for you to look out for it in game. Next up, the monster tab. In this column, it shows you the biomes each monster appears in and its elemental weakness. In the right hand side, we see status weakness. 
three bars for very weak, two bars for moderately weak, and one bar for resistance. And the last column shows the monster raw severity. Muted in grey means that the monster will have no effect on you. In green, it will have some effect. And in red is where when the monster roars, our character squats for a really long time. Then we have the HP tab. From this chart, we can see all monster HP from 5 star to 10 star, as well as how much it takes in poison status tick damage throughout the difficulties. It will even show you the HP scaling for multiplayer if you navigate here. Last but not least, it also includes Hunterthon HP indications. Very useful. Next, we have the Physiology and Rewards tab. Super, super useful. Here, we're able to firstly check for weak spots. If the number is in orange, it means that it is a weak spot, and skills like weakness exploits will take effect. If it is in red, then it is a resistant spot for the respective attack type. Next, the red strike indications are to show if they are a breakable part. If you see a red longsword, it indicates breakable by severing attacks. And if you see a hammer, blunt attacks. Some breakable parts don't have a chance of R2 and above rewards like here, the Jagger Stomach. So the Jagger Stomach only drops R once. You'll always want to check for breakable rewards if you're on that Wyvern Gem Shard grind or are farming for specific materials, especially in event monsters as they are super time limited. Lastly, we have the map feature. This will show you the geographical biomes around you for you to plan your walking, cycling or driving routes. You can even make the colors appear stronger by just clicking on them again up here. You can increase its saturation by up to four times. If you are focused on a specific biome, then you can remove the others and just look at where is forest for you. Additionally, you can check biome information for the next day and up to two days later. Lastly, in the search bar, you can put in coordinates. You can get this from Google. Or you can simply type in the name of the place. So far, it works for park names, street names, shopping malls, etc. I often use names with this map feature. It's so convenient. So far, I don't think postal codes work. And this map feature can be a little finicky on the phone, so make sure to use this on your computer. The copy paper icon copies the coordinates and the button next to it is a link to this page. Alright guys, that's all I have for MHN.Quest. I hope you found this helpful. Share the good word and if you're like me and use this website like a bible, consider donating to Sam for single-handedly carrying the whole Monster Hunter Now community. Thank you so much for tuning in. Do like, share, and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm or say hi in the comments. If you have any appreciation to show for MHN.Quest, the comment section here is the perfect place to do it. Have a good one and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye-bye!